That's one of the things I personally like about it is you have so many options. You know, I want to know weather. Great. Do you want to plug it in? Do you want to pull it from something local? Do you want to pull it from a device? You know, oh, what if you don't have the tool to get that piece data? Well, there's another thing just right here where you can, you know, get a better estimate than just kind of like licking your finger and sticking it in the air. It, it's a nice comparison tool as you build up different rifles and different bullets. It can be purchasing selection for you, or it could be why do I want to run this instead of that? What is up, everybody? Jim to my right. Jim, we're going ballistic today. Oh, nice. Geoballistics. Uh, and to help us talk about geoballistics, a super robust ballistics app, we have Mr. Ben Farrell from our engineering department. And uh, this, is a, uh, this is a robust ballistics solver. Long range is uh, so hot these days, as we like to say, Jim. Mm. Uh, but you can't really do anything, in my opinion, IMO, uh, regarding long-range shooting without a concrete, accurate, precise ballistics solution. That is true. Have you been on the forums lately? I think, yeah, I saw I've that never somewhere. heard you use IMO before. Well, I said it. I know what it means. You do? Yeah. Well, obviously, you used it correctly. Yeah. But I just wondered where you got it from. I mean, I don't think... It, that's not like a new... You know no, what I mean? Like you're not you, you, w by saying that it's not like I prove that I'm like hip or something, right? Anyway, you just became a little bit more hip than I thought you were, though. Well, I'll take it. Ben, what's going on with geo ballistics? What is geo ballistics? At its core, it's a ballistic solver, like you said. So when you shoot far, maybe it's 600 yards, maybe it's 300 yards, maybe it's 1,200 yards. How much does that bullet drop? Right. This is kind of the keys to tell you. How much is that going to drop? How much do I have to aim up? At its core, that's really what a ballistic solver does. Yeah, now, obviously there is more to it than that, which I'm sure we'll get into somewhat, you know, because, well, when you start factoring in some of these ballistics calculators can really factor in all kinds of things as well, uh, especially geoballistics, because you can start adding in, you know, wind values, you can start adding in um, your geographical location, altitude, densities, all that stuff. Now, that all plays into your solution with, you know, how much you got to aim up, uh, or maybe a little left, a little right. But, well, uh, Jim, I'm going to back up too, because there's more to Ben than just geoballistics, so I was so anxious to jump into this. We didn't really... Point. This first time on the podcast. He did actually remind us that he hadn't been in this room before, which was surprising to us. Yeah. We just usually assume everyone, at this point, after this many years, that we th I thought we'd interviewed everybody in the building. I don't think we're not even close. Well, somehow I've avoided it. I've been lucky till now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how to take that, but okay. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> actually, I think I do know how to take it, and that's why... No, I'm just going to pretend that I don't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ben, what's going on? But tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do here at Vortex, uh, and uh, then then we'll jump into geoballistics. Yeah, so I've been at Vortex about four and a half years now, uh, mostly mechanical engineering capacity. Um, so our group, um, the Impact 4000, that's actually sitting on the table here, so designed kind of the mechanics of that, how that works, and how it integrates with the app. Nice, nice. How'd you end, how'd you end up here at, at Vortex? Um, I think, like a lot of people here, just a passion for hunting, shooting, had the background, had the open position, and Stars aligned. Fantastic. That's Very it. succinct. Yeah, that's the quick and dirty version. I like it. I like it. Love now, it. back in to geoballistics. Uh, this thing is very cool. I used it quite a bit this last fall. And, uh, Which one, the impact? Uh, just the geoballistics app. Oh, oh my and, bad. Yeah. And actually coupled with the Razer GB, which is on the table, which is this guy right here. But... um. So, okay, so Geoballistics, it's a ballistics app, but it does, it, there's a couple versions of the app. So there's kind of like a regular version and a pro version. So like, what, what are the differences there? Um, the main differences are what the capabilities can do. So with the regular version, you get one rifle. So I can edit the one rifle, but not build out my whole arsenal of rifles. Mm -hmm. and then the other thing it lets you do is share those profiles. Like, so I could build it out and send it to Jimmy and say, here's my gun. I could build a range card and send that to you. Um, it also lets you back your data up on the server. So in the event of you lose your phone, you get a new phone, you can pull that information in and it just repopulates for you. Oh, nice. Very cool. And that's on the, the regular version? That's, that's the pro version. Oh, that's the so pro the version. So the pro version unlocks the multiple rifles, okay. the sharing, and the backing up of your data. Okay. Gotcha. 
Gotcha. Uh, you uh, you went through a lot of things there with uh, with range cards, um, and maybe we should we talk about all those things right now, Jim, or kind of go down go down the line. I've got this I've got this bulleted list. Should we just go down the line? Should we be methodical about I this? You have a bulleted list. Let's follow it, Mark. I don't want to get you too out of your rhythm here. Um, geoballistics is a part of vortex. Yeah. What uh, it, it's it it's been around for a while, but how did we bring that into the vortex fold, Ben? Yeah, so we brought that in. Um, if you look at this, is the Razor GB? It's a physical product. This is Geoballistics. It's a software product, so it is a product. It exists um, now that we own it. It lets us kind of drive how we update it in the future. So because it's software, it could look different a year from now. You don't have to buy another physical product. Okay. Right, so it's a little different that it's software, kind of Vortex's first venture into the software mobile app side, mm -hmm. right? So that's the beauty of it is we can update whatever we want on this. It'll work with all our products, and we can kind of control where we go from here. Gotcha, gotcha. So you can kind of like shape the path of the software to match what we want to do on the hard goods side of things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we talk a little bit about like what makes Geoballistics special? What makes it different from other ballistics software is out there because there's a number that you can find, you know, and, and guys around here have used them for, you know, many years leading up to this point where you've got ones on the, uh, on the app store or online that are real simple. Uh, you have, you know, some offering different little, uh, their own unique flavor to uh, ballistics solving. Geo ballistics has some unique things that it does that, you know, other ballistics calculators don't do. Like I'm thinking of some of the mapping softwares and stuff like that. Um, what's their what's their shtick? What made them so interesting? Yeah, I think your mapping is the big one. I think it's laid out in a pretty intuitive fashion. Um, so you're a big car guy, right? So when I said a ballistic solver tells you your solution, a car gets you from point A to point B. What's the difference between two cars? Well, they all get you from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the solvers on the market are very good. So when you talk about the differentiating features, I think this map mode is a big one. So we can go in here, you know, this is Vortex headquarters where we're sitting. I can drop a pin. So say I walk out the door here, I stand here and I see a target over here. I can drop a pin. It tells me how far away that pin is. And it tells me by ballistic solution when I click on that pin. Right. So um, if you didn't have a rangefinder, you could kind of get really close. You know, there's some geographical features. There's a walking trail here. So maybe there's a deer standing on that walking trail, and I can pin down real close to where it is without a rangefinder. That, that's a nice, unique feature this offers. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think that one's really cool. And, and you can use, when you, when you factor in, like, you know, people can go on your Onyx app or even Google Earth or something like that, and you can get distances from where you're standing to other spots. But the fact that that's incorporated in, and somebody thought to incorporate that in with ballistic software to then just take that distance, and also some of the uh, other factors, just geographically speaking, you know, the, the topography and things, take that distance and that pin, and then give you a ballistic solution based on it. You can set pins then kind of, you know, all over if you're looking at, uh, uh, you know, an expansive, oh, I don't know, outlook or something like that, and you've got a nice spot where. A deer or, uh, you know, whatever your quarry is could pop out at multiple different spots. You can kind of get different uh, pins put down in those spots. Um, so you kind of just, you can build out your range card already based on the specific geographical area that you're in. Yeah, you're spot you on. Know. You could have a deer tower, you know, here in Wisconsin, you get a lot of fields where maybe I set up a tower and I can see 300 yards to that corner, 200 yards to this tree line. There's a big rock out there at 500 yards and and kind of build those out and have those known and saved. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you might have a have a food plot somewhere, you know, and just like you said, some of those key areas where you think deer are gonna reveal themselves. Um, it's interesting too. Like, I, I hadn't really thought about it this way because I've had the GB and I've been using it, you know, for a little bit now. But if I got the app and I input all my data, and I just had like a standard rangefinder, I can still get those real-time ballistic solutions essentially in my phone and like you said you can get really close with just dropping a pin on where you think that animal is now granted now some of the stuff is going to take a little bit of time um 
and even if you just had a standard rangefinder with you, you could confirm that though. Like mm. if you range the animal, you could be like, okay, you know, 432 yards. Then you drop that pin. You're like, oh yeah, that's 432. Like that's going to be, you right. know, um, or, or thereabouts. And you're going to be able to kind of match those things up. Um, any other, uh, you know, uh, with the, with the mapping, uh, component that people are using that for. So maybe before we get too deep into mapping and range cards and dropping pins, you know, what is this? So if someone new just jumped in and they say, well, I want to use it, what am I doing? I'm dropping pins, but is it giving me a solution for my gun or whose gun is this? Yeah. You know, what do I need to set up? How does this work? Mm -hmm. So there's really four key pieces of information you need to put into the app. So first is what gun am I using? What's my profile? Um, what's the weather? So temperature, pressure, humidity outside. What's the wind doing? And then what is my target? So we kind of jump to the end with dropping your target and saying, here's my target. Right. But really, there's three pieces of information you need to put in before your target really gives you valuable information back. Yep. Gotcha. That's also good. Yeah. Very good point. So well, I had that on my list, Jim. And then you said, we're going to go down the list and you range cards. That was the second to last thing. Well, he has to go. I or not range cards. Range the, card. uh, anyway, I had the. I asked a question. We went down a rabbit trail, Mark. It's not the first time. It is not the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I expect we'll do it again today. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, continue, Ben. Yeah. So, maybe to back up, I, I like this HUD screen look. It gives you, here's your ballistic solution for the data we've input. You kind of get a quick peek at a few different things. So, my wind speed is accessible, so I can up the wind speed right from here. I can change the range either by ticking it or just manually inputting you know, maybe 678 yards. So it's a quick way to see my solution, kind of a good spot to live. But again, what gun is this for? So this is, we just opened the app. This mm -hmm. was a fresh install basically when we started this podcast. So if I click on this little user icon in the upper left, basically this is that pro account you were talking about. Okay. Um, so if we say we've already purchased it, which is get a little message. Um, we ask for some information when you log in, but... That just unlocked Pro, so now it's in Pro account mode. So now when I click on Rifles, I can see the one default it came with. Pro account is not a paid-for thing. It's just sign-up-for thing? Um, how no. Does that, how it, did that work? Oh, it is paid for. Yeah, so this is our mobile developer's phone that's kind of cracked, so it's got the code built in. Oh, okay, so, got it. I was like, now how did that just happen? Yep, okay. it, it worked with magic. So now that we're Pro, we can add as many rifles here as we want. Yeah. So this default is what we kind of put into the app to start with. And you're free to go in and edit that to your heart's content. So, Mark, maybe we'll build your gun. What do you hunt with these days? Uh, uh 300 short mag, as per usual. Hmm. The wisdom? The wisdom, yes, sir. All right. What bullet do you shoot? Uh, as of late, I've been uh, shooting uh, 190 grain Acubond LRs. Okay. So do you know the... The BC and the length of those Acubond LRs? Uh, not off the top of my head. I don't either. So if we click on this bullet library, we can scroll down, and you're shooting a 300 WSM. Mm -hmm. Probably won't have it. Not even worth looking at. Oh, it oh, yeah, it it does. it's in there. Yeah. So then we can scroll down. You're shooting 190 grain mm -hmm. Acubond. So it's a Nosler bullet, right? Mm-hmm. Acubond LR, there we are. There it is. The bullet library already had it. It already knew all the information. Yep. So if you know it, great, put it in. If you've tuned it and you know a different ballistic coefficient you want to put in, you can certainly go into manual and edit whatever you like. But it also pulls it in from the library, so you don't have to know it. That was one thing uh, I believe I, I remember hearing when we uh, acquired GB, we updated the library, and we have been maintaining updating the library with new cartridges as they come out, new bullets as they come out, things like that. Yeah, it's certainly a big ask, and like you said, long-range shooting has exploded, so there's a whole bunch of new bullets coming out. We're trying to keep up on keeping those in. Mm -hmm. If someone wants a bullet that they notice isn't in, you can call into Vortex. The customer service team can get that added in for you in basically no time. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it happens pretty quick. Yeah, it's punching the data, restart your app. Oh, I see it now. Yeah, yeah, it, that's that's cool. And, and like you said, you know, we we work to stay on top of it, but it's a, you know, we talked about the app being robust. I mean, that is, it's a robust bullet library. Like, you, you, you might have to try a little bit to find 
something super I don't want, weird. No, I don't want a there. challenge. Well, they'll I'm find sending it. Sending out a challenge. <laughs> they'll find but, it. But uh, chances are, you know, it, it it's in there yeah. already. Yeah. But but we also, I mean, like, we try to stay on top of it. But please call us if there's something you want to see in there. So finishing building out the rifle here, um, you use 100 yard zero? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you know your barrel twist? Uh, one in 10. 10. So we'll just update that. And then muzzle velocity, probably a little faster than that. Oh, gosh. I, sh- I should open my app and look at it because I this is the one that I oh. have in there. I think it's like 20, 28 something. Um, Top left there, Marco. I see you. Yeah. I was, just call it 2850 or? Hold on. Hold on. He's got it. Almost. Last time he was out, he was shooting at 1,159 yards, apparently. There we go. I need to get better at this. This is the... um, I plugged all the information, and I'm just like... I don't. The intuitive nature of GB is being shown right now, because if Mark can make it it work, and it's... it's 2869, let's say. 2869. There you go. There. So we... Are you MRAD or MOA? Uh, MRAD. All right. Perfect. So we'll leave this data in. Down at the bottom, you have the option for these geoballistic overlays. So you've got your vital size, energy threshold, velocity threshold. Mm -hmm. So this might be applicable if you're shooting long range and say I want to know if I'm in the transonic zone or if my bullet's gone subsonic, I can set a flag. Or if you're a hunter, you might say, I'm going to shoot it in elk with a kill zone that's this big and I want to make sure my bullet stays in and I want to know when I'm outside of that so I know when I need to dial. I might say I want to hit a white-tailed deer with a thousand foot-pounds of energy or I might know my bullet, I want to hit it 2,000 feet per second or faster for reliable mm-hmm. expansion. Yep, yep. Now, whatever those numbers are for your particular setup, you can then put in here. Now, the vital size thing. So if you put your vital size as 12 inches in this case, that is where... How does it factor that into its into its solution? It's basically um, that determines how finite it's going to be with giving you ballistics corrections and when to dial and when you don't necessarily need to dial. Yeah, so, so what that so vital range is on Mark's 300 WSM, we just built out the profile, 100 yard zero, and he says, I want to hit a 12-inch kill zone of an animal. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to aim dead center. And when I drop more than six inches, or if I went over six inches above it, I'd be outside of that kill zone. So tell me when that happens. Got it. So we scroll down here, and you see your max vital range, that black dot. We see the black dot up here notifying us we're beyond that range. So we've dropped outside of that at 243 yards. So an animal walks out at 240, Mark goes, great, hold that on, pow, got it. Hmm. If it walks out at 300, I'm going to be below that number. Yeah. Okay, got it. And that those dots up there, I guess I never, I just always saw them there. I didn't really re- put two and two together when I was using it. So if you see the black dot, that's where we're outside of our max vital range. Yep. If you see the red dot, you know, and I don't, I don't mean to get ahead of us here, but then you know that's where you're going to be at whatever distance you've input into the calculator outside of your energy threshold that you were hoping to achieve for reliable expansion, whatever it might have been. The yellow one is outside the velocity threshold, maybe going subsonic, so on and so forth. Exactly. So okay. a great way to find that if we just type in. 1800 yards <coughs> likely should, outside of all those all it's a pretty the, safe bet all the dots lit up yep but in reality we didn't get outside that kind of speed of sound transonic threshold until 1384 yards so that 300 wsm with the 190 really carries that's uh that's that's really useful because in many of our long-range podcasts that we've talked about before with people they talk about you know if you set your velocity threshold as right around that speed of sound and you're going transonic that's where weird things happen and knowing where that spot is can at least prepare you for you know um i guess can just prepare you for how to how to think about what your bullet's going to be doing at that point um which is obviously i'm talking about like preparing for going transonic which is almost like a, a, a skosh unpredictable but semi predictable but anyway but yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> I I look at that, you know, uh, velocity threshold for expansion. Like that, that's really one of the key numbers that I'm looking at. 
And, you know, with that rifle, with this bullet, as far as I really intend to take a shot at a game animal, and I'd say, you know, my maximum distance there is, like, under perfect conditions, right? Uh, perfect environmental conditions, like, you know, not a lot of wind or things like things of that nature. Um, I know that I'm going to be well within my threshold for expansion there, you know, as far as I'm going to shoot. And that's like, that gives me a lot of confidence to go, okay, no matter what shot I take, that's mm-hmm. within my comfort zone and my ability. Yeah. Good to go. Well, that was such a, I would say that for a long time, that's been a very nebulous thing. And people would just be like, 400 yards, that's it. You know, just done beyond that point. And there's a lot that factors into your maximum comfortable distance of taking a game animal. It's not only the energy threshold. It's like you mentioned, Mark, some of the environmental the wind that's happening. You as a shooter, your comfortability, what position you're shooting in, a lot of stuff comes into play. But as you begin to become more comfortable, maybe you get more practice and you become a better shooter, you become more comfortable in certain situations. There's no more need to be like, you know, oh, well, you physically can't shoot a deer beyond 400 yards. Like there's just this imaginary brick wall that a bullet hits and, you know, beyond that, it's just, it's, it might as well be like shooting Nerf darts or something like that. You can actually go in and see right here what, uh, how that threshold works. And I'm, in, in this case, we came up, I think we just used whatever the stock number was there in the energy threshold. So, you know, here it says for that that arbitrary number, 981.3 yards. I'm not saying that you're going to be like, well, up to 981.2 yards. <laughs> I'm pulling that trigger again because there's a lot to it. But now you know, if you're in a super stable position, perfect environmental factors, something comes out at 450, and you've got that thing dialed because you have a ballistic solver here that can get you to, you know, so, so, so precise. You've got your scope dialed. You've got all the time in the world. You know, like, the stars have aligned, and you can see that, you know, I'm good out to well beyond this. I'm kind of one of those guys who's like, why not? You know, like, what? everything is there. Like, you're comfortable as a shoot, like, Right. So anyways, yeah. that's that I think is also one of the really, really huge benefits of a ballistics calculator. And of course, we're talking a lot in the hunting realm here. But yeah, I mean, it, it, one thing that I like to watch, too, is like as you as you change cartridges, as you change your bullet selection is, you know, being able to compare them across the board, you know, and potentially even make, you know, might help you make a selection. It might help you make a selection of something that you have in your current arsenal. You're like, oh, I'm going on this type of hunt. Maybe uh, I'm planning on using this bullet. Uh, y- you know, y- it can really help you narrow down what you take on that trip. Yeah, yeah that's a great use. Is Say I want to switch to a Nosler Partition 180 grain bullet instead. What does that mean? How far does that carry? What does that drop at distance? And it just tells you, oh, this 190 Acumon is probably a little slipperier. Shoots a little further, a little flatter. So it, it's a nice comparison tool as you build up different rifles and different bullets. It can be purchasing selection for you, or it could be why do I want to run this instead of that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, we talk about this, you know, a lot, but as you, you know, bullet up, bullet down and wait, you know, Ryan always talks about his uh, his 308, and I think he's shooting, oh gosh, now I'm like, he always talks about it, and then I can't remember. I think it's a 127 grainer, though, out of his 308. Well... You can really watch as you increase the velocity because he's bulleting down, but also that bullet construction is it's a tougher bullet, right? Mm. It's, it's it's Barnes bullet, so it's going to be uh, um, you know built to drive monolithic style bullet. So he's getting that increased velocity, but also you know uh, extremely sound bullet construction. So I don't know. You you can just really watch all the little you know balance points and figure out where yeah. you end up. Yeah. But then at a slower speed, it doesn't expand very well. So then you, you know, bring it back in a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's all really interesting. Interesting stuff you can do prior to what, and it can be a, a long range competition shoot where you're trying to determine, you know, bullet selection and stuff like that for for your gun, or it can be before a hunt or something along those lines. You can do what, at least I know I used to do in college. I think a lot of other people did in college, where it was like, well, if I get a 
if I get a 23% on this test, will I still pass? Well, then what if I get an 85 on this test? Well, you know, you can, you can play that whole game before you ever even go out in the field by just messing around with stuff in your ballistics app and seeing what comes of it, seeing what capabilities you're going to be working with before you ever even go out. So you already kind of know. You're not playing that game <laughs> as, there's, as there's an animal or, or, you know, standing out there with only so much time before it moves or as you're on the clock, you know, in some, in some competition. Um, yeah, you can, you can goof around with this stuff until you're blue in the face. But yeah, you can goof around yeah. with it and, and uh, shop for a new rifle. Yeah. You know, I mean, like as far as like if you're like, oh, I think I need the new, you know, X, Y, Z. Well, you can run the numbers on that and be like, well, actually, maybe I want this other one because of X, Y, Z. Now I've ran the numbers and I know that for how I intend to use this rifle or cartridge, you know, one is going to be better than the other. That's yeah. like that's window what, shopping from your coach. That like it that. is. That's what Ryan and I are doing currently as we're trying to figure out my next bolt gun an SBR. Mm. Good luck. Not an 8.6 blackout. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Why not? Only because it's like the easy button and I just can't bring myself to do what everyone else is doing. It's got to be weird. All right. So suit yourself. We kind of already said the disclaimer, but right, we put in some data and we go, oh, we typed in 1,800 yards, so there's a solution. So I can shoot an animal. Well, it's beyond there. So if it was 950, I could shoot it. That, it's a little simplistic. Yeah. So you gave us a number, I think 2869 with your muzzle velocity. Mm-hmm. How right is that? Was that box information? Is that from a chronograph? That would have been chronoed, yeah. Okay. So say you didn't have a chronograph and you bought a box of bullets and it said 2850. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe your gun's 2950. Maybe it's faster. Maybe it's slower. You don't really know. There's a feature down here at the bottom that basically you can do a muzzle velocity correction. And this is real helpful for guys who maybe don't have a chronograph but have a place they can go shoot to validate. So I put in 2850 and I shot... So 850 yards, and then you can say, well, I actually shot it, and I entered, oh, what's a realistic drop here? So if I say, well, actually, I observed. I probably tell you. Well, I got pretty close there. Yeah, you did. So if you say, well, actually, I observed six. You know, it was exactly six MRAD to hit center of that target. It's telling me use 2892. So it wasn't the 2850 the box said. It was actually a little faster in my gun. So I click Apply. That 2892 will get piped in right up here to my muzzle velocity. And now that's been calibrated to my rifle. That's cool. That's actually really cool. You just totally obsoleted my video on YouTube about how to get your muzzle velocity without a chronograph and using all these calculations and stuff because now there's just an app that just does it for you. Yeah, that... (laughs) You can still do it the Thanks manual way and entering Thanks data and looking and going back, but no, that's awesome. That's but I mean, he's still like really cool. He's still assuming that you went to the range and validated your your dope, though. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. This relies on a dope validation. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you do it the more manual way, you still got to do that anyway. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. Yep. And when you do this, you probably want to do it at a little greater distance than like 200 yards because your drop is so fine there that your muzzle velocity is not very sensitive mm-hmm. you know if you're off by 50 you might not even see that on the target right you get out past five six hundred yards you'll see that yeah i mean that's that's the trick too because i find that and i guess i'm talking to myself here like shooter ability right comes into play like it does you know so i always say you want to validate at the furthest distance you feel you are can accurately shoot, if yeah. that makes sense. Well, and then, of course, you're assuming that, <laughs> I mean, not to say that whoever's listening to this podcast wouldn't, but you're assuming that the gun's put together right, the scope's been mounted right, you're shooting ammo that's actually capable of, of hitting a target at a greater distance with some level of consistency and all that stuff. That is sometimes a thing that can be a limiting factor. Like, if we're talking about, no offense to it, some core lock cheap ammo that you pulled out of like a dusty closet from 35 years ago or something like that. And you stick that in your gun and try validating it at 900 yards. Maybe, maybe a chronograph at a hundred yards would be the best way to get a more accurate. I I will say Jim, we actually shot (laughs) some dusty core locks the other day. Did you? That 
might have been like the original. They might have been yeah the first run when they were really paying <laughs> um, a lot of attention to it and they, they, they shot famously. Wow. But but yeah, if you've got if you've got a two inch gun at a hundred yards, like a lot of the stuff is a moot point. Yeah, that's a fair point, Mark. Yeah. That was the rifle, right? We went through and built Mark's rifle. We did a a mock muzzle velocity correction with it, so we shot at range, right? So now when we're shooting targets, well, what do we have in here for weather, right? It It's still got the default 59 degrees, 29 inches of mercury. We're in Wisconsin where it was, what, minus 11 in my truck driving in this morning? Mm-hmm. So this weather isn't going to accurately reflect what a bullet would do today. So you've got a few options here. The first is I can just manually type it in, right? It was negative 11 degrees. So pressure, I guess I really don't know what the pressure was this morning. Right, I don't have a way to measure that or know it intuitively. So I can scroll all the way to the bottom and get this weather. So if we go click that, we're pretty close to Mineral Point, Iowa County there. So we can click that and it'll say, well, here's your wind speed and direction and here's the weather it's reading today. So if I click use, use, now it just put those values in for my wind speed direction and my weather. Hard to beat that. Well, Hard to beat that. Now, well, unless you have something like a personal weather station yeah and that that's close right we're in wisconsin where everything's fairly close together you're not going to get greatly different elevations you know we're not in the mountains where that elevation might be four thousand feet different than where the airport True. is yeah so this works fairly good here um if you want to get a little more refined we can connect two weather meters so one being the weather flow and the other being a kestrel so you can actually if i use the weather flow here push the button to turn that on and we grab that. We can actually get a reading from this live. So if I blow on that, you can see your wind speed ticked up. Press and hold to take a sample. And then it'll tell me, hey, in the studio it's 71 degrees with a pressure of 28.49. And that wind speed was 4.8. Yeah. So this would get me where I'm standing today right now. I love how this works. I think, and, and, when I went on our first rabbit trail and I was like, what, what makes geoballistics so interesting and and special? And obviously there's a mapping feature we can get into, but geoballistics has been around for a while now. They've had, they've, they honestly really awesome company in the way that they developed their app. Um, you know, and that's obviously a huge reason as to why Vortex was interested in, uh, in acquiring geoballistics. And, uh, you know, and we continue to try to keep it up to date and all that stuff. But like, it's so intuitive. Like, there's a there's a lot of ballistics calculators out there that will get you the right numbers and data and things of that nature. But they're not as easy to use as this. Like every every time you're like, oh well, you know, we're gonna go and we're gonna like grab this piece of data. You know, oh, what if you don't have the tool to get that piece of data? Well, there's another thing just right here where you can you know get a better estimate than just kind of like licking your finger and sticking it in the air um yeah that's, which is really it's that's super cool that that is a huge uh plus in its in its favor that's one of the things i personally like about it is you have so many options you know i want to know whether great do you want to plug it in do you want to pull it from something local do you want to pull it from a device how do you want to get it yeah well and depending on your circumstance you're going to choose one over the other like if i'm in the back country like i'm not going to be able to necessarily just connect and get my local weather from yeah, you might not have the phone. any service or anything. So um, that's a situation where I might just enter like kind of like a mean weather, if you will. Um, or it might be a situation where, like you said, you've got your, uh, you know, your Kestrel or something like that. And you're going to get your weather information from that uh, and pull that in uh, via Bluetooth. Uh, or you go like I do. You plug all my information in. I connect it to my GB. That's the range finder with ballistics that I use the most, uh, which has environmental sensors on it. So I'm just using the sensors on the Razor 4000 GB to kind of bring in my weather, like sans, um, sans wind, which I would like, you know, maybe input manually or something like that. Yep. Or it might be middle of summer and I'm planning for an elk hunt in Colorado in the fall. And I want to just enter what the weather is going to be and see what difference that has on my bullet. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you might find at the distances that you intend on shooting, it's going to have a dramatic effect or not a dramatic effect, too. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of that goes back to what's your comfort level, how good is your rifle. You know, is 300 yards a long shot? Is 600 yards a long shot? Mm-hmm. 
Exactly. Exactly. So now we've got our rifle built out. We captured weather for the day. This is the studio weather, right? But your rifle, your weather, your wind. Um, wind can be a tricky one. You know, a lot of guys are reading Mirage or they're kind of, they've tuned their body to feel it and kind of know what it is. You can take a, a wind vane reading. You can do the old shoot and check if you're shooting steel targets and just see what did that feel like? Was that right? Was that wrong? Is it more? Is it less? So rifle, weather, wind, now we're to your target. So once you have those three kind of pieces of information, now we're ready to shoot a target. So if we go back to our map, right, this pin that we dropped at the start of the podcast is still there. If I click on that, that solution updated with the rifle we built out, okay, the weather yeah. and the wind we put in. So the wind, it knows the direction of the target from me, the direction of the wind that I input, so it knows if I need to hold left or right because of that. And then it gives you your solution. Hey, when you're doing the um, shoot and check method, now I guess there's an easy way, and maybe I'm overcomplicating it by thinking about this, but um, say you shoot at a target of 500 yards and you're off right edge, and you can hold your reticle up and you can just see, well, of course you could just aim left edge, which most people will probably do uh, when shooting at steel, but you know you can uh, hold your reticle up to that and you can see you know, how much you are off and or make a really close estimate is there a way to input that in there and then like have it update the wind direction based on how much uh the cleanest way is probably so right now it shows a right 1.3 so say yeah. i held right 1.3 uh, we still have our 1800 yards dialed in let's put maybe a more realistic range in sure so this is saying right 0.4 yep if i hold right 0.4 and it was still two tenths off i can come to the wind here and just tick it up and down Oh, until it until it you say, oh, it saw. was actually probably six or that yeah. seven instead of that five. Yeah. Okay. Got it. That makes sense. And then, that's probably the, that is the best way really to play with wind is I mean just yeah keep goofing with it until it mimics what you saw if you're shooting at steel and you're just kind of wanting to see what the wind value was. Yeah, wind is one of those really hard values to pin down. You know, it's really easy to measure temperature and say the temperature is this, and you can measure your scope over the bore height. You can get pretty easy numbers. Wind is kind of nebulous. Well, I mean, it, you know, no secret, it can be going up and down at your location. It can be doing different things, you know, throughout. You Dusting, know, spiraling. You it's know, if, you're, if your bullet crosses a little valley, there could be some sort of updraft or things like that. There's just a million things going on that, that, that make it, you know, difficult and at times frustrating to account for. I will say um, when, you know, validating data or uh, trying to sort things out. You know, we're using this example of my 300 short mag. A um, little bit buckier of a cartridge than some. Uh, when I was getting ready for a hunt this fall, I went down to the range by myself, and was, uh, unfortunately the days that I had to work with the rifle were pretty darn windy days. I want to say, gosh, what was it? It was like a 14 or 16 mile an hour hmm. uh, crosswind. I, it was basically a full value from the west. Uh, so at some of those further distances, I wasn't able to see where, like my bullet was drifting off the steel plate, but I couldn't tell necessarily how far. But then uh, how I accounted for that by myself was by being able to pull in the weather, which was actually pretty darn accurate, I was like, okay, well, now I know how much I need to hold. And I was actually able to make some pretty good impacts at distance nice. because I had yeah. that information. That's good to hear. And that, so when you go to the airport and pull that in, you get what's often referred to as prevailing wind. So the kind of stuff you see on the news, the weather pattern, what's the overall wind doing? You know, you get some fluctuation in valleys and canyons, but that prevailing wind is a really good starting spot if you don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we pull this 16.1 out of 250 degrees, so out of the west, that's going to be a really good starting spot if you don't really know wind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that's one thing. Having a spot, when you're trying to validate, I'd say when you're trying to validate data, well, in a lot of situations, it's nice to have a spotter. But when you're really yes. trying to pinpoint your dope at distance... Um, having, having somebody able to, to, to spot your impacts is, uh, can be very helpful, particularly mm -hmm. if you're shooting a little bit, you know, larger caliber rifle, you know, if, if you're shooting a little 
six arc or something like that, it might be a little bit more easy to stay in the scope and spot some of those impacts. But I can confirm. Um, so when you have multiple rifles on here, uh, you know, obviously it's as simple as just you can build out profiles for as many rifles with the premium account as you want. You can build out your buddy's rifles, you can build out your rifles, and you can just switch between them. And, you know, the environmentals can stay the same. You can bring a bunch of different guns out to the range, and the environmentals stay the same, and then you just keep swapping between guns, and it'll just keep spitting out new information based on whatever you're dealing with, right? Yeah, that's a great example. So if we copy that rifle, and we'll just pick a different bullet out of the library here. So we'll grab... Two forty three seventy seven. There you go. We'll grab a cutting edge bullet. So oh, we should really name these so we don't get ourselves confused, huh? I agree. So this is the we'll just call it a two forty three. Then we'll call this one Mark's three hundred WSM. WSM is very important to add, right, Mark? Oh, absolutely. It's the superior of the 300s. <laughs> That's the part no one cares about. <laughs> so for that bullet we picked, and again, all the rifle information, we didn't update for the 243, so the muzzle velocity was still the same because we copied it over. But if, oh, we hop right. if we hop between these two, we can see the different solutions as we switch. Yep. So that's a great way to say, oh, if I put a different bullet in the 300 WSM, if it's a different velocity, maybe I hand load and I can push it a little faster, a little slower, what's that do for me? You can see the difference on that target. If we go back to the map, same comment, right? We've still got this pin dropped, that solution updated. So since we're talking about the targets, um, Jim, you kind of hinted at this earlier, but there could be something there or there. This could be a PRS stage. This could be my hunting spot. I can build these three out and have them for reference, hop between them. I can save that, or I can export it to my comp card. So that's where now this is a, a savable card that I could transfer over to this eDope card. I've got my three ranges, my three solutions, and that's for the weather I have, the active rifle I have. So if I change the weather, these would update. If I change my rifle, that would update. If I change the wind, that would update. Um, right, so there's kind of those four pieces of information, the rifle, the target, the environment, the wind, that all go into this solution. I think that's really cool. Again, I don't mean to get ahead of ourselves or anything, but you, with with the map <clears throat> and with building a card like this, you can do this either by manually punching in distances, you can do this by using the map, and you can even do this with some of the products with integrated GB as well. Now, I don't know if that's where we want to go yet, Mark, but I just... I, th I think we just uh, go with the flow now. Yeah? Yeah. All right. All right. I think the the cards and the being able to build out a, a card, um, I think is so nice because, you know, twiddling around with the range and, you know, manually inputting the range or ticking it up and down for every different target that you do, you can do that at first and maybe when you're just playing around. But once you actually, like, are kind of ready to get going here um and you're ready to you know shoot a stage or you're ready to you know you're out in the field you're in your spot and you know there's a number of potential areas that you could see something uh, having a card ready that you can just quick reference and be like okay that target that spot i already know what distance that is because i've already got that figured out and so you know whether you memorize your card or even just reference it you know it's like all right well if it's if it pops out at spot one 1.3 spot pops out of spot two 3.9 you know you can just already start to know these things and i think that that just makes things so fast which is really cool but yeah talk about a little how the products can help with this as well building out the card i think that that's just where things start to get a little like borderline sci-fi yeah <laughs> so if i click on the bluetooth symbol in the bottom right here it brings up everything this can connect to so we have the weather flow is still connected, right? He's given us battery level um, where if I'm using the phone compass or the weather flow compass, so I have some options in here. I can disconnect, so I drop that off. Um, Custrel details, that eDope card I mentioned, and then the two Vortex products that connect, being the impact and the razor. 
So I'll just grab the impact here. This is the impact 4000 that we launched back in September. So if we click on that tile, we can see there's an impact in a remote. If I push range and wake this up, it says, hey, I see an impact connect to. It's got a funky engineering serial number on it because it came from our engineering stash. But if I click connect, it connects. That's all you did. You didn't, you clicked a button on the impact and it said, it said, I just saw an impact. Do you want to connect to it? Yeah, I, I woke this up. So that because this so hasn't cool. been connected, like fresh out of the box, it says, hey, I see one advertising that wants to connect to me. Do you want to connect to it? And I said, yep. So it connected. That's awesome. The other thing we put in is where swipe we talked right about. Swipe right and connect. Yeah. <laughs> swipe right. Would you like to swipe right? <laughs> so it's saying, you know, range cards are different. Which do you want to use? The rifle profiles are different. Which do you want to use? And then that kind of syncs the two up. So they're squared away, ready to go. We talked about the weather and wind. So this has weather and wind on board. So if I click those little buttons, now weather and wind are going to be coming from the impact. Oh. So now when we back out here and I look at my weather, it says, well, it's coming from the impact. So you can't edit it here. It's kind of what it is. The impact is saying it's 71 degrees in here, 28, 73 inches of mercury. So pretty close to what this was saying, if you remember those numbers. Yeah. Okay. But now that really unlocked what you were getting at. So it pulled in our default 308 Winchester profile on this. If I point at that back wall and push range, that back wall is 11.1 yards, and it gives you a solution. Very cool. Um, now, just to uh, clarify for anybody listening to this as well, who, if you're more at the beginner stage or you're still figuring a lot of this stuff out, now the impact that Ben is holding and talking about, it is actually a standalone unit. That's why it had its own um, range cards on it. That's why it had its own rifle profiles on it so you can just get something like the impact or the razor gb you know and use them standalone um which is a really nice thing of course when you can have an app to go along with something uh like this you know the impact has a small screen on the back and it's it's as intuitive as i'd say you can be with a directional pad and you know a couple buttons and a small screen like that but when you can get in the app and start controlling things with the app uh, you really open up um, some of the possibilities and just, I'd say, the, the speed and mm. intuitiveness of it. Um, so it can work. It can work on its own. Now, when we imported the you know stuff that it is grabbing and using, like its um, rifle profiles, its environmentals, um, yeah, then it, it just became the reference point for the geoballistic software. Yep, exactly. And we kind of talked earlier about your ability to decide. So if you want to use this as a standalone device, use this to enter your ballistic coefficient, your muzzle velocity, you sure can. If you want to use the app and build it out that way, you know, here's your 10 rifles. I can go in and edit those or change them however I want to on the app as well. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to disallow anyone. If you want to use the app, great. It's a good interface. Don't want to take the app to the field with me. Great. Just take this. Yeah. So Very cool. Jumping back over to the map here, so if we are right here in the world, you drop your pin, I push range, you see that pin get dropped, and if I want, I can click add target. So right kind of orientation in the building, I was facing west, so when I pushed range, it dropped the pin west of me. If I click on that, I can see my solution. Again, being 12 yards, it's kind of hard to know if that's right, but there you go. I can build out however many pins I want with this. I can make my range cards. So you could be out in the field, range all your targets, add all the pins, convert that to a range card. You can build the range card here. You can build the range card here. Really, yeah. it's all about options and however you want to do it. Yeah. That is, that's the part I think is just wildly, wildly cool. Because with the with the impact, once you, what's the word? Uh, it's not co-align or parallel line. What's, when you align it with your rifle scope, basically such that when you're, ranging with the impact you're ranging where your reticle is pointed at when you're on your zero point your, ri your rifle scopes travel what is that what is that called again yeah it was, it's a parallel offset alignment parallel offset. But, yep so once you get that aligned then where you're pointing your impact at and is where you're pointing your rifle scope at um where your crosshairs are provided that you're still you know on your zero point of the the rifle scopes travel but anyway you can be really precise with where you're putting those pins now because it has a compass in it and it has you know, all these things built into the impact. When you point that and you range that spot 
and you can see it if you're watching on YouTube that those pins are popping up on the map where we were pointing the impact. That's, I think that is so cool because now you're out in the field, you've ranged certain areas. Again, let's just say it's this, you know, a, a hunting scenario where there's different areas that an animal could pop out. You've ranged these different areas. So you've essentially come up with a, a map based ballistics uh, chart that you can reference and use and you know your ballistic solutions to all those different points now also you have on a map with gps you also have these points done up so if something does pop out there you shoot it and it drops over dead because you were so precise it didn't even go anywhere it just fell like a house of cards then when you pack up your stuff and you're going over to get that thing if you're going across a valley or a canyon or things start getting a little bit different looking you don't have to worry about it because you already know exactly where you dropped that pin, you know, and, and you did it through your rifle scope right on the spot that you shot. So there's no guesswork on your, you know, mobile app where you're like, I think I shot it right over there. It, right. You know, it's your spot on, which is so cool. That's huge. Uh, I mean, and, and that's that's how I would see, you know, as, as a hunter, Jim. I mean, I see that as being like a really, really big asset. I'm probably less likely, if I'm being honest, to be like, oh, I'm going to drop a pin here, here, and here, and here. Because like... You know, you plan everything, but the animal's going to come out where the animal comes out. I mean, yeah. you have your best ideas, but um, but to be able to use the impact and drop that pin so precisely, you know, essentially where you shot is um, really good knowledge to have. If the animal does tip over or, or if it does run, because like you said, the second you take three feet off the hill, everything looks different and your yep. perspective changes. Uh, the brush gets taller. Uh, just all, all the, all the things, uh, and, and to be able to have that reference point, um, very handy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this with respect to the impact, but the Razor GB functions essentially the same, right? Instead of your rifle scope, you're looking through this and using the reticle in here, but still drop pins on the map, still see solutions in here. You don't need the app for either device, but the app gives you some extra capabilities. I love that. I, I like think it. it's neat. Um, you mentioned that digital Yeah, the, the DRS eDope card. So this is a product that we integrate with as well. So if we click on the Bluetooth, you can see it's listed down here. You can set up some options. You know, do you want it displayed a certain way or horizontal, vertical? But that really comes from, if we jump back over to our comp card, so along the top you've got your HUD, chart, map, and comp. If we build out a range card in here, we can push that over to this device. So on this, I just built out 400, 500, 600, and so on. Um, something you can kind of have with you or something you can build a specific range card. So if I add that target and then say you click that export to eDope button, then when you put this on, it'll update that data on over to this. So there you go, success, and it pushed that on over. So that thing is so cool. It's a tiny e-reader with the e-ink setup, basically. And you energize the pixels inside with the backside of your phone via basically the opposite of wireless charging on your phone. And it updates it to that. That thing doesn't even have a battery. But it can still be updated without, you know, like erasing magic marker or a pencil or swapping out a piece of painter's tape or something like that. I mean, that's that's cool. Yeah. I like it, but then I also don't like it because none of you don't what just happened it. makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's a pretty slick device they made. Mark, so. uh, Mark came in and Ben said, oh yeah, this thing's really cool. It's this... Um, it says e dope card and mark was like he's like it doesn't have a battery though and mark was like so it's solar <laughs> and Ben's like well no it's it's it uses e ink right but it's got to be solar <laughs> it looks no, it's not solar it looks it looks like the screen on uh, like my old calculator a little bit yeah it's so it is interesting, right? When you click that export too, it basically says I'm getting my phone ready to send that data and power. So when I put that back to my phone, just like your wireless charger, it will basically provide power from the phone and the phone sends the data and that's what it needs to like flip those pixels, get that information to display. And then it, it generates that image. 
So when you put it there, it just like putting your phone on a wireless charger, the phone provides the power. So it's kind of reversed from a wireless charger for your phone and that mm. the phone's a power source, pushes that data over, updates that card. And there, what what would I use this e-dope card? Like, you know, let's say I've got, you know, I've got the app in my phone, you know, potentially I've got it paired with a, 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 a Razer GB or an Impact. What am I using the, the, the dope card for then? So there's a few good uses. Um, we haven't really talked about this chart tab at all. So if I enter a thousand yards here, I just get a quick chart view from 100 to 1,000 in 100 yard increments of my drop. And then I get where I hit my thresholds, you know, that black line and the red line. Oh, right, okay. I can push this over to my dope card and just have holds in 100 yard increments on out and keep that with the gun. The other thing you can use it for, say you're shooting a PRS stage, you know, a lot of guys are building the stage out, writing the dope for each target. Yeah. I can put that into my comp tab. So if we have a stage that 780 and then one that's 678, and then one that's 900, right, I can build that out. I've got my 11.3 in there, but, right, so we can basically say, let's export that, and then when I put this on the back here, it'll update, and then I can put that on my gun and shoot the stage. Mm -hmm. So I'm no longer having to write the data down, keep tape or whatever I'm doing, so you know, there's your up 3.1, 7.7, 6.1, 9.9 for my targets, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Yeah. And Probably, then you could, uh, you could, if you did, like, so the one PRS mash that you and I did together, Jim. I was going to say, it's more of a PRS type thing. Yeah. Where you're where you're going in knowing that there is an abundance of targets that you're going to be shooting at rather than there's just going to be one that could pop out anywhere. <laughs> right. But this also it seems like a much more efficient, cleaner way to do what we did where we had, you know, a hundred different pieces of tape. We were writing stuff down manually. Oh, my gosh, yes. Um, I guess you're still going through that process in a way. But you're saving those just into your phone, and you're like, oh, we're at stage one. Boom, let's kick over the stage one information. There's our dope card. Off we go. Well, the yep. whole time, I mean, it was. there's so many things that you're trying to concentrate on at a match. Ugh. And when you're trying to listen to the stage brief, and you're also, you know that you're either going to go right away or you're on deck, and you're trying to quick write down the distances of the targets and weird little notes that the you know, the, the guy at that stage is telling you about, well, hey, the last two groups had an issue with this, you know, so, it's, so you're trying to write this stuff down, you're trying to get it on your band, then your handwriting's all screwy, so you can't even read it when you actually do get to the point that you're up. I mean, that's not the stuff you want to be worrying about. When you can just be in your phone and you're just tapping on your phone, you know, this distance, this distance, this distance, throw those all in and then just update it to this little mini Kindle and then just reference that. I mean, that's... That's nice. Yeah, and there's a lot of cool things we can do with this. So I can save that range card. I can send that. So if the three of us go to a match and I'm on a stage, say we're in a different group, I can send that over to you and just say export as CSV or export for watch. Or, you know, basically send that over to you by going to my range cards here. This is what it pulled in from the impact, but you can create your own. So I can share that. you got to be logged in, but I would basically say share text to Jimmy and Mark. Mm. Right, then you get a blip on your phone, click the import, boom, you pop in the range card. Interesting. That's cool. It's like being able to use somebody else's notes in school, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I'll send you my notes all day, Mark. My six arc for your 300 wisdom. I'll just send you those notes and you can just use it. Yeah, yeah, that'll, that'll work. Directly same. translates. Everybody knows the six arc and the 300 wisdom have the same ballistics. Well, that's what's nice. So the range card, it's got your direction, distance, and inclination to each target stored. Mm -hmm. So in my app, I've got my gun selected instead of your 300 wisdom or your six arc or, you know, whatever you guys are shooting. And I put my gun in. Now it's accurate data for me. Yeah. So you can share notes and have it actually work. Ooh. Speaking of the, uh, directions and stuff, too, that's another thing is we were talking about wind. When you have a prevailing wind or you've actually manually input a wind, the range or excuse me, the razor and uh, the Razor 4000 GB and the Impact there, they have compasses on board. So as you actually range something, it's knowing what direction you're ranging into relative to that wind direction. So then it can update its wind corrections that it's giving you in the solution as well, which I think is another thing that's just... That there's, there's so much going on under the hood here that's, that's doing work that's easy to forget in the heat of the moment is doing it for you. And that... 
that's what you need. Somebody out there is is grumbling because they're saying that all of the art of long range shooting or something is lost. And you know, if you're into that, great. Don't use this. But otherwise, if you like having your shots go where they're supposed to go every time because there's you know a lot of computing power going on helping you get that, then I mean, this stuff is just awesome. Yeah, it, I'm another, in that boat. It's another tool for your toolbox. If you want to use it, use it. If you want to be old school and not, don't. Yeah. I love it. I love it. The degree of confidence I have having a customized ballistic solution that I know is absolutely true, and it's essentially giving me that solution for where I am, the direction I'm shooting, uh, the direction that the wind is coming from, uh, if I have an, if, if I've got an accurate, uh, you know, wind reading, uh, the elevation that I'm at, the temperature that I'm at, all the environmentals, like it's a customized solu- solution for where I am at that point in time is, uh, pretty invaluable. And we've streamlined the amount of things that you would need to take into the field to actually measure all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we've talked about quite a bit high level. I'm just going to kind of rattle off some features that I'm thinking of that we missed. Yeah. So when you talked about capturing target distance or direction and inclination, this phone has these buttons. So mm-hmm. if I'm shooting up a hill, I can put this on the gun or point at the target, push that shot angle icon. That's 26 degrees. Oh. If I want to know, so the target's this way, what direction the world is at, click that, 320 degrees. So kind of northwest, right? So I can capture my my shot angle and my shot direction using the phone sensors as well. Oh, you don't need to necessarily have the uh, the razor or the impact with their sensors on board. You can also do it with the phones. Exactly. That is cool. I didn't know that. So the same way when I drop a map pin, it knows mm-hmm. where I am and the direction that pin is relative to me. The phone knows the direction it's pointed. I can capture that. Um, so you really want to get in the weeds ballistically, right? You scroll down. I can see how much energy I have when it impacts how fast it's going when it impacts, how high it went. So the highest it was was 3.4 MRAD at 483 yards from the gun and then came back down, and it took 1.4 seconds to get there. Maybe that's useful for you. Maybe it's not. Um, Time of flight, you think a running animal, pretty important number to know. Mm -hmm. You can also do movers. So think a steel target that's moving back and forth at a competition. You can enter that target speed in which direction it's moving and then your solution is updated based on that so i've got my wind i've got a mover it's a lot to kind of think about and juggle i can input it here and say i need to hold four amrad left for this impossible mover at a thousand yards and 60 mile an hour wind (laughs) (laughs) probably still missing but i mean (laughs) but it's going to be a closer (laughs) mess if you get enough shots at it you may (laughs) may make that happen yep Um, there's a settings wheel in the upper right there if we click on that you know, what do you like to look at? Your HUD, your chart, your map, your comp, so I can select what I want it to open with. Do I want it to auto-locate to where I am and just pull in my geographic location on the map? Um, spin drift, Coriolis, crosswind jump, so I can turn all those on or off to ignore them or see that solution. So those, right, how's your bullet drifting due to your twist rate and your bullet length? Coriolis effect, where am I in the world? Which way am I shooting? Crosswind jump, you know, if I get a strong wind, is that bullet hopping up and down in the wind at all? Mm. Ben, like, why why wouldn't I want to just have those on? Um, great question. I'm a big proponent of just leave them on. That's what the bullet's doing. You want to know what the bullet's going to actually do. But there's also a valid solution for, you know, I want to build out this range card. Mm-hmm. I just want to see 100 to 1,000 and 100-yard increments and not worry about wind. Let's turn spin drift off. We'll just assume everything's zero. I'll estimate wind in the field, and I'll kind of put a left right in. I don't want it to be biased. You know, in the big scheme of things, if you have wind, that's usually going to dominate spin drift so much. I don't want to see it. Gotcha. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's a great question. I'm a big just leave it on, do what the phone says. It's calculated it all out for me. Why would I ignore it? But I also get the, you know, I've thought about this. I don't want to see it. Here's why. Great. Flip the switch. Gotcha. Yeah, Mark, we don't want to limit anyone. Ben already said it. Well, I wasn't limiting. I was trying to maximize, like, if there's more information jim more data yeah use it but if someone wants to turn it off mark so be it 
live free or die. Yeah. Speaking of live free, if you want to live in one of the unfortunate countries that doesn't use the imperial system, you can switch it over to meters, centimeters, meters per second. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be really fun to... I like the fact that, once again, speaking of freedom, we allow you to use distance units in yards or meters, but then independently you can also change your rifle profile units so you can have the ultimate cluster of imperial and metric. Yeah, and this there's a few reasons to do that. Um, the big one is, right, if a lot of military <clears throat> guys know distances in meters, so mm -hmm. I don't want to communicate in meters, but everything else is English to me, so let's just flip that one switch. Got Some, it. you know, bullets, a lot of times publish thing in English, so maybe I build out all my rifle in English units, but I still think of weather in non-English units. Yeah. So... Um, and then, you know, helpful kind of customer service user manual. So the user manual, I think that's what you have printed out here. Mm -hmm. gives you a detailed what can the app do, how do I use it. So if you have any questions that you can't figure out in the app, you can always reference the manual. Customer service is like, I'm seeing solutions that don't make any sense to me. If I click on that customer service and say load, we've pulled in a standard environment, a, a known rifle. We should see this solution. Kind of just validates everything's good. Now let's back in from there. You know, what were you editing? Maybe I set my bullet length at 0.1 instead of 1, and now my spin drift is just going crazy. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a good way to start from a known good spot. Wait, what happened with the customer service thing? So we just loaded a customer service profile. It, so we've got, if I go to my rifles now, there's a customer service rifle that we pulled in. It's yeah. the default one. Our environment was pulled back to default. So we should see valid solutions. Oh, that's your way of basically somebody's like apps broken and you're like, okay, well, let's look at a rifle that we know is in a very normal neutral state. And if it's giving a really bizarre reading, then we can say that maybe the app is having an issue. But if it looks normal, then exactly maybe. Yep. So if I mark, you mess something up. I just went into my rifle here and I changed bullet length to 0.1 inches. If you've got something that's 0.1 inch long, you spin it at. 10 twist per inch or 10 inches per twist and you shoot it at 2850 right you're gonna just veer off so when you look at our solution it's like why well, have no wind why is it telling me it's 32 m <laughs> right and i pick up the phone i go hey ryan muckinhorn this is not making sense what's going on here yeah and you're like well let's start from scratch make sure everything's good and then we'll back into building a rifle okay. out you know where do we run into an issue here Gotcha. Yeah, then you can start analyzing those variables. And I mean, I know I did that one time. I uh, somehow just input an uh, incorrect uh, twist number. Mm -hmm. And it was affecting things, and I had to go back and like, wait a minute. I'm like, oh, that's, a, you know, and it was a me thing. Yep, and we have some limits put in, but, you know, there's ways around it. Like I just showed you, you can get numbers that this isn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a nice start from scratch instead of, well, there's 50 variables. Let's go down the list. Tick, 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 tick. Oh, it was that one cool man there's so like there's so much going on but it's also you know in the grand scheme fairly simple at the same time yeah i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of plug and play i, I feel like access to the different um you know inputs and variables like it like we said it's pretty pretty intuitive which is uh that's a need for me that's not a want for me jim it's so seamless too. Get an impact. Get a Ranger Four Thousand. It integrates Razor, with it. Razor Four Thousand. Listen, Mark. I grew up in an era where the ra <laughs> <laughs> the rangefinder that Vortex had for many moons was just called the Ranger, and it made sense because what it did was range. <laughs> My apologies. Uh, Razor Four Thousand GB. But whatever you get, you get a product that has GB integrated into it from Vortex. It integrates in seamlessly. You don't have any of that stuff. You can still use this thing to, you know, basically just about its max potential. You know, um, I think those things only add on further utility. But it's just, it's, it's easy. Very handy. Very handy. Yeah. Yeah. Did we did we miss hey, what, anything? Um, oh, what? I I got a question. Let's say you uh, let's say you're in your profile and you just everything's complete gobbledygook because you've been goofing around with so many things. Is there just like a reset button? That on your profile. The customer service profile kind of gets it back to a state. 
Um, when you say profile, I'm assuming you mean. So I mean, rifle. like, yeah, our our 308 Winchesters, you know. So we've we've goofed with so many things, we don't even know what weighs up anymore. Should we just delete that profile and start over with a new 308? Probably is it the best bet. That's yeah, that's probably your cleanest <laughs> bet. <laughs> okay. So you know, it's really not that hard to rebuild it out. So your bullet profile is all up here. You can always grab from the library that just rewrites all those. Yeah. We scroll down here. You know, there's your sight height, zero range, offsets, twist, muzzle velocity. So if you are totally screwed up, it's, what, 10 things to change? Yeah. So, and there's there's enough in here that will allow you to grab stuff from whether it's the weather station or whether it's the bullet library, whether you can get back to some semblance of reality if you've been goofing with stuff so much, which is nice, you know? Sometimes when you get these things, and I, I remember first being into ballistics and getting a ballistics calculator and being afraid to change anything, any of the values, because I was like, well, if I change this to something just to see what, what it would do, you know, how am I, I, I better remember how to change this back or else like uh, this thing's going to be just screwed six ways from Sunday. And it's nice knowing that on this, you can very simply, you can create, you can create an account on here and just call it like tester or something and just goof with stuff. And then if that's so screwed up that you don't even know what way to keep going anymore, just delete it and start a new one, you know, or, and, and start and go back to using the bullet library, go back to using weather from a weather station and just kind of the more basic stuff and you're back to a good solid ground. So like there's no way what I'm getting at is there's no way to screw up the app so bad that it's like irreversible. Exactly. So what, go crazy. So what I like to do is exactly what you said. So I've got my 300 WSM, right? We crown on the muzzle velocity. That's right. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to play with it, but maybe I'm doing a podcast or talking to friends and want to shift it all over the place. So what I can do is just copy that put it in that test folder and then this is just my test gun right so I can go in it's all those same parameters that I copied over but now I can play with bullets see what it does and keep that original profile untouched yeah gotcha yeah so uh, I think that that's another great thing I mean playing around with ballistics and stuff and just seeing what different bullets will do what different rifles will do twists environmentals all that stuff I think that's how you learn uh, a lot of this stuff that's how you learn what what things affect your bullet's flight differently. And so you should be able to have like this sandbox that you can go in and just goof with stuff without without creating this irreversible just like, you know, mess. Um, I think that more people will learn a lot more that way. Exactly. A big thing I tell people is, you know, if you don't know, just put it in and find out. So, yeah. you know, well, when do I worry about wind? there's a five mile an hour window and I'm shooting a deer at 200 yards do I worry about it put a five mile an hour wind and put it 200 yards you know does it drift an inch probably don't worry about it yeah you know, well if I go to 800 yards and now we're drifting 15 inches maybe you should worry about that so kind of build out in your head where is this a problem yeah. if I'm not going to shoot beyond 300 yards and a wind under 10 doesn't get me off a deer don't even think about it yeah yeah put in your kill zone if that black dot doesn't illuminate or whatever you know or pop up then you're good yeah that's so cool. So it just gives you that knowledge to be comfortable in what you're doing. Again, to put the disclaimer out, I wouldn't say at a thousand yards you're good to shoot seven point nine, you'll hit the deer, don't even think about it. <laughs> Maybe do the validation, be comfortable with what you're doing, shoot the gun, make sure you can shoot it and you're capable. You know, test it out before you're gonna do anything, especially shooting an animal long range, right? You wanna be confident. The one thing a ballistics calculator will never be able to do well, I shouldn't say we'll never be able to do, but can't do right now is Pull the trigger, aim the gun for you, pull the trigger for you, you know, hold the gun in a position for you, whatever. It can't do all that. That's still, that's still all you. And that still requires time and practice and, you know, there's an art to that. So. Oh, yeah. As much as this might feel like cheating that we just put it in, here's our solution. We pulled in weather, like this is good to go. Go shoot it a thousand yards. It's real easy to miss. Yeah. <laughs> we do it all the time. Tremendous. <laughs> well, and then everything changes too. It's like, okay, your max you know, effective range, uh, prone off a bipod, uh, will likely be different than your max effective range off a set of shooting sticks and your max effective range off, side of a tree. off hand or off a tree, um, which is all good stuff to figure out. And you got to go to the range to do it. So, yep. you know, that's not a bad deal. Yep. But it is good that, you know, behind how shaky am I or what's going on that here's the math. This should be this should be right, and, mm -hmm. you know, you need to figure out how to use that. Cool. 
Oh, so much power. So much power in the palm of your hand. Yes. I love it. Uh, very cool, Ben. Well, I appreciate you uh, walking us through it. Um, it's just it's just really has a ton of functionality that yeah. is very uh, applicable to the shooter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot here. We covered quite a bit. We glossed over quite a bit or just kind of briefly mentioned as we were kind of flying through the app on the screen. I think there's probably going to be a lot of questions that come out of this from people who watch. Mm-hmm. Feel free to reach out to Vortex. Give us a call, comments, you know. We'd love to hear feedback on how we can make this better, what made sense, what didn't you. Absolutely. There. Sure. I think we'll wrap with that. I couldn't, could not say that better myself. So, yes, thank you, everybody, for listening, for watching. I'd say this podcast, uh, and we should have mentioned this previously, but we've got a screen up here. So a lot of the stuff that Ben is talking through. Now that you're walking, all the way through an hour and 15 <laughs> minutes walking in. Walking us through. That's how we get the, the views, Jim. We get the listen on the audio, and then we make them go back and, and watch That's uh, right. You'll watch never the believe version. what happened on video at minute 37. Exactly. <laughs> and you got to watch to find out. That's right. Uh, so, yeah, this, this would be a good one to watch on YouTube. Uh, thanks everybody for listening and watching. Like Ben said, if you have any questions about this, give us a call. Uh, Geoballistics app and uh, integrated uh, Vortex Optics, all very cool stuff that uh, are going to make you a more accurate shot. We'll catch you on the next one. There you have it, folks. Thank you very much for listening. As usual, give this video a like if you liked it. Comment something below and give us a subscribe to the Vortex Nation podcast channel. It would mean a lot to us. Also, why don't you give us a follow over on Instagram while you're at it, at Vortex Nation Podcast. We'd love to hear from you over there, and we'll keep you updated with all kinds of cool photos and videos from our adventures that we do here. Otherwise, we will see you on the next one. Thank you again. Happy hunting and shooting, everybody. Have a good one.